Hi, in this video, we'll talk about cryopreservation. Cryopreservation is a process that preserves organelles, cells, tissues, or any other biological constructs by cooling the sample to very low temperatures. Now at very low temperature, all the biological activities of the cell stop. Now cryopreservation is like a hibernation mode. When the cell is alive, enzymatic activity, gene expression, and metabolic activity is in progress. But when the cell is in cryopreservation mode, all these activities are halted. Now let us look at some applications of cryopreservation. Cryopreservation could be used in blood banks, seed bank, or even in sperm bank. In modern day labs, in order to freeze cell culture, we need to use the idea of cryopreservation. In medical field, in order to preserve organs, or in agriculture, in order to preserve rare germplasm, cryopreservation is a nice technique. So, in short, cryopreservation is very essential in these days. Nature is the best cryopreserver. Imagine the body of a woolly mammoth is preserved for millions of years under these ice, right? But while cryopreservation is important, we need to understand the risk of cryo damage. When the temperature surrounding the cell drops rapidly, there is ice crystal formation in the cells. This can lead to severe damage to the cell and the cell eventually dies. But when that temperature drop is gradual, that is also problematic because the, sol the solvent surrounding the cell is frozen right now. So the solute concentration really increase and a lot of water is lost from the cells and the cells are dehydrated, crenated and eventually the cells die. So what is the solution? The solution is to use cryoprotectant along with slow freezing conditions. Cryoprotectants are substances which protect cells from these kind of freezing damages and in a moment we would learn how. Such chemicals are also known as antifreeze molecules. Some examples are dimethyl sulfoxide, glycerol, or let's say ethylene glycol. Now, whenever we use cryoprotectant, it increases the solvent concentration. So it kind of balances the increased solute concentration and it prevents ice crystal formation. So the cells do not die and water loss can be prevented. And this is how cryoprotectants help and prevent the cellular death. A quick fact is here. So when you look at the fish which are surviving in harsh situations in the polar region, they do have cryoprotectant proteins in their scales which prevent ice crystal formation. And that is how they evolved and they can survive in these extremely cold conditions. Now let us look at under lab circumstances how we can perform our cryopreservation. We need a specific media called cryoprotectant media. But before that we need to understand when is a good time to freeze the cells. The cells need to be confluent, they should be healthy and their viability should be greater than 80%. So in a ballpark estimate, the cells need to be at their log phase of growth curve. We need to add cryoprotectant media which contains DMSO and serum and then transfer the cell into a cryoprotectant container where the temperature drop would be gradual and when the temperature reaches minus 80 degrees centigrade then they can be transferred into liquid nitrogen containing containers where the temperature is as low as minus 190 degrees centigrade. Similar strategies are used in a uh, sperm bank or blood bank. Now, let me tell you that these cells can be thawed and taken out. So, in sperm bank, the sperms which are cryopreserved 10 or even 20 years ago, they can be taken out and can be thawed to perform in vitro fertilization. That's the biggest advantage. So, in this video, we learned that cryopreservation technique could be beneficial for healthcare, economic, and environmental sectors. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and please check out all my playlist. You can follow me in Instagram or in Facebook and do let me know in the comment if you have any suggestion or how you like this video. Thank you.